Hello, and welcome to the Heat Software short video series. My name is Renee Gonzalez, and joining with me is my colleague, Rob Kelsall. In today's session, we're going to be covering an in-depth look of our endpoint security solution. So Rob, can you tell me a little bit about our platform? Sure, yeah. So um, as you can see here, Rene, I'm just in the, on the dashboard or landing page to our endpoint security platform here. Um, we have a fully modular platform that provides patch management, application whitelisting, device control, and AV. Um, it's, it is, as I said, it's fully modular, so you can actually enable and disable these modules as required. Um, and you can see here in this particular demo system, I'm actually licensed for all four, all four modules. If we wanted to do anything with those, update them, for example, we could just go to Tools, uh, Installation Manager, and we can manage that quite easily. As you can see, it's a web-based um, console, so we're sitting on top of IIS, we're using SQL Server as a back-end database. Um, solution scales very well, we can have up to sort of 10 to 20,000 endpoints attached to, to a single server. Is it on-premise? Uh, it is on-premise, uh, the solution um, does support installation into virtual systems as well. If you wanted to do that on a cloud-based virtual system, um, that would also be an option for customers. Okay. So, um, in terms of all the modules that we offer, you can see from the, uh, the toolbar menu here, discover, review, manage and report, and that kind of workflow goes across all modules. So we find out what you have first, then you think about what policies you're going to put in place to remediate, and then report against what you've done um, and what you're going to do. So a good starting point when you're looking at the platform is what do I actually have out on my network? Uh, do I have Windows systems? Do I have Unix, Linux, Mac systems? Where are they? What's the IP addresses? So the first uh, component in the platform that you might take a look at is actually discovery. So via IP range, we can tell customers exactly what they have out on the network, and we can then review those asset discovery jobs, and we can really drill down into specific systems that have been found. So we can see here there's a number of jobs that have completed previously. I'm just going to drill down into one of these here. We found 70 different endpoints, and we can very quickly see uh, the host name, IP address, and the operating system um, of those systems. So once we've found the endpoints or discovered the endpoints and they show up on the list, what would you do next? So actually from here, Rene, we could actually right click and we could deploy an agent directly from the console. That's one way. Um, or we could just go to tools and download agent installer and go ahead and install the agent manually. Or maybe you could package that up with SCCM or whatever software deployment tool the customer has. Um, once the agent is installed, it's actually then going to go ahead and register with the endpoint security platform. So we go to manage and endpoints. I can see all of the endpoints that are currently connected to this server. Um, on this demo system here, um, I can just put a search in here. It's actually the CA101. Um, you can see the agent is installed and is connected and registered back to the, uh, to the server. So when you install the agent, do all the modules get turned on by default? No, not at all. So um, I've just flicked to the agent control panel here on this laptop. We can see that the core agent is installed. That's responsible for the communication and registration back to the server. It's then also responsible for adding on the modules that the customer requires. So we actually minimize the agent footprint. We only deploy the components that are required for the capabilities the customer wants to put in place. And it's very quick to update that policy. So if I go ahead here from the console, I can right click and I can actually manage modules that are installed on this particular endpoint. So for example, let's say I wanted to enable the application control or the patch module. We just check a box, we can click OK. And now what will happen is the agent will realize that its policy has changed. It will pull down its new policy, see that application control is now required, and that core agent will go ahead and install that module for me automatically. So we'll see this update in a moment. The other cool thing that the single agent does is it will monitor different processes across those different modules. So if you imagine you're a customer and you had a different solution for patch and vulnerability assessment, you had another solution for AV, and you're looking at a, maybe a third solution for application control, all of those solutions would be scanning the hard disk at some point. 
if you have three separate vendors for that, that could have a severe degradation on your overall endpoint performance. With the heat single agent, we'll actually monitor all of those processes and make sure that no one common process runs at the same time. Thus, with the heat defense in depth strategy, you're not only going to get better risk mitigation, but you're also going to see better general uh, endpoint performance. So this would prevent multiple products getting the hard drive at the same time, which Correct. will impact the end user. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and the kind of the power of the agent doesn't stop there. It's also self-healing and self-protecting. So, for example, we'll have a look at our device control capability uh, in more detail in a future session. But if a user is prevented from plugging in their um, their iPhone. The first thing they're going to do is say, hey, look, I've got this heat agent installed. It's blocking my iPhone. Let's see if we can remove it. Even if they're local admin, our single agent will protect so that you cannot modify or tamper with any of our files. So you can, and even a local administrator could not remove our agent. So f for end users that have local administrative rights that try to uninstall IT security software, our solution will stop that from happening? Absolutely. So preventative action, and even if an attacker was trying to in infiltrate a system, they're probably going to try and gain admin privileges and, and try and circumvent the AV solution in place. Our agent will actually prevent that from occurring. And indeed, if we update the agent at a future point, the core agent is also responsible for managing the agent version that's installed. Okay. okay. So we can see here now at the endpoint, for example, while we were talking there, Rene, um, the, um, the agent actually updated and the application control module was added. Okay, great. Seems pretty simple. Well, that concludes, our today, that concludes today's session and we look forward into you joining our future sessions.